And yes, ladies and gentlemen, so not everybody grows up surrounded by music, surrounded by faith, or brought into this world to love the Lord, love your family, and love your music. And that's why I wanted him on the show, because I love that concept. I think that's some pretty cool stuff. And uh, when you hear their voices, they've got the, I've been saying it all week, voices of angels. Uh, please help me welcome Carter and Cassandra Scambato. How are you this morning? Let me. Good. Yeah, you, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Oh, man. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> Do you guys drink coffee? No, I don't know. Let me ask once you. Once in a while. Once I'll in a while. Coffee. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. Do you get up at seven o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I do. I, I do. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah. So Cassandra, right? I got it right. Yes. And I want to correct myself for the two of you. Uh, for, you know, I know your dad's from Fort Plain. So I had been saying Fort Plain for the last week. You guys are from Broad Auburn, New York. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I love it. Is it snowing today? <laughs> no. no, just just rain. Rain <laughs> finally stopped. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Man. So uh I got so much I want to ask you guys cuz I was thinking through this this morning and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, we could like like all my shows, I feel like I could talk forever because I'm getting to know you for the first time right here." Right. Car yeah. Yeah. Carter and I exchanged a couple emails and, and then that was it. Um, what is the normal time for you guys to like get up and start your day? I'm just curious. I know how the, you know, young people your age can, can sleep these days. <laughs> so what I mean, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm on kind of a, a little bit of a strict schedule. So I get up every morning at seven, but on the weekends, it's free range, so usually around like ten. Is that right? <laughs> what about you, Cassandra? Do you have the the luxury of just chilling out and and? Uh, um. So usually on the days that I work, I usually get up around like seven thirty eight. But the days that I don't work, I just sleep in. That's <laughs> so whenever. Hey, listen, that's early for both of you, though. So I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You didn't make these answers up, right? No, no. <laughs> Carter, why do you get up so early? Because uh, my dad makes me. <laughs> yes, I I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I knew I loved your parents for a reason. <laughs> you know, it's funny because it'll it'll be 30 years from now. And you're going to go, man, I am so glad my parents made me get up early. My father used to throw water on my head. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not making that up. If you didn't get up, there's work to be done. There's life to live, right? Mm -hmm. Why waste mm -hmm. this sleeping? So let me start. Uh, well, because I go left to right, it's just like a habit. And Carter, you're on my left. So I'm going to start with you. How old are you? I'm 16. 16? Do you have the keys to the car yet? Uh, I have my permit, but I don't have a car yet. <laughs> Cassandra, how about yourself? I'm 19. 19. Okay. Are you going to be the person? Uh, do you drive? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> I was going to assume that, but I didn't want to assume anything. Yeah. Are you going to be the one to teach your brother how to drive? Well, my dad is teaching him right now on a standard, but I mean, if I can take him out here and there. I would. So, so Carter, you're learning how to drive a stick shift. Oh yeah. 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 Back in the day, it used to be on the steering wheel. You know that, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. You're not, you're not learning with it on the steering wheel. Like your dad's not teaching no. you on like a 1967 something, right? No, I'm like an 09. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Welcome to the world of driving. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show something really quick because I think it's important early on in the show uh, that we show this. And I, I've just figured out a couple things here. I'm going I'm going to uh, split this screen for a second because I want to show move this over. Hold on. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is a, I'm showing a picture of the family band, right? The entire family. Out in the winter. Do you know a picture I'm talking oh. about? Yeah. yeah, I know exactly. Yep. 
Okay, so the first thing that came to mind is nobody is wearing a jacket in this photo. Yeah. <laughs> You're just, so, go ahead, explain this photo to I, me. I remember, I remember taking this photo right out there in our front yard. Um, I think it was my dad had the idea. He wanted to get us all out there with our instruments <clears throat> so we could take the picture out there. And I, I was just freezing cold the whole time. Crying. I was crying. You were crying. crying my eyes out before the picture. You can you see in the picture, like my face is just red. And everything. So yeah, I was so cold. And he's like, we got to get this picture done. Um, so we got the picture. And I remember just running, running back inside. And I got in my footy pajamas and just curled up in bed. That's hilarious. But yeah, I, I remember that. I, I thought just because you're from Broad Albany, you're so used to the winter that you just walk out of the house with no jacket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, yeah. how old were you guys when you started? You know, I know that you, you come from a musical family. Your mom and dad are involved in music um, on many different levels and different instruments. But how do you remember how old you were when you first started? Um, I, I'm pretty sure I was around seven or eight. So he was four or five. Wow. Um, but I remember like my dad having me come sing harmony when I was four and then he taught me piano and then just kept going from there. Yeah. Nice. So you play, you play acoustic guitar, you play piano, obviously you're a singer, uh, Carter, you play instruments as well. Uh, yeah, I play the drums. Um, I remember my dad starting me out on like percussion just shaker and bongos and stuff like that around like five years old um and then around seven he started to teach me the drums and just kind of went from there how does how does that work in a family band like like <laughs> do you guys know who the partridge family is yeah yeah have you ever watched it i mean i know it, it's back in my day the partridge family but you probably watch like it. The Sound of Music or a different something different? No, no, the Partridge Family, it was like a TV series, right? And then, you know, okay, yeah. Danny was the bass player and, you know, the, the mother was the singer and the mother's boyfriend was the manager, but nobody really knew if it was her boyfriend, uh, Kincaid. <laughs> I don't know. It was this weird scenario. Uh, but the whole family played and they had this really cool bus, right? And it was called the Partridge Family Bus. And they used to jam out in the garage and, and they were always looking for a record deal. What's it like in the Scombato house? I mean, do you guys like get done with dinner and it's like, okay, you got a half an hour, get the dishes done. I'll meet you in the garage. <laughs> yeah. Um, we always did music practice in our basement. We had the whole setup uh, down there, the speakers and everything. So um, yeah, we just kind of um, would go out there and jam and practice and stuff. So is that still is that still the case? I mean, does does the family still get together as a group? I know the two of you are doing uh, some songs together, but is it still a, a family band? Uh, uh, not not really anymore. <laughs> um, last time we played was in in July, all together um, as a family, but just with my brother being out of the state and um, just kind of growing up and going to college and stuff, we haven't been together as much. Yeah. So um, we haven't had as much time to play, but, but when we get the chance, we definitely uh, still enjoy playing together. That's so. beautiful. Uh, how many are there? How many, how many siblings? Yeah, um, two older brothers and then us. Four of you all together. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so when mom and dad, you know, decided to get you guys into music, was it thought out? Okay. We need a drummer. Carter, you're playing drums. Cassandra, you're on piano. Like, did they stage it that way? I love it. Right. I, I think my dad did a little bit. He was, he kind of, you know, grew. He just yeah. He taught things. my brother bass, my other brother, you know, certain instruments. So we all had our own instrument to play kind of. That's awesome. Put that together. Yeah. Are you guys, uh, are you homeschooled? Yes. Yep. You are. Were all of your siblings homeschooled? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, this is, and I was thinking about this and I, I think it's awesome uh, what your parents have done. Listen, kudos to your parents. And, and, and I know, I know yeah. you, you, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, can't imagine. I can't either. Like seriously, if I had to homeschool my son, <laughs> He probably really wouldn't talk to yeah. me today. Uh, yeah. But what happens in a scenario of being homeschooled? You're, you're musical and you're involved in music with your parents, right? 
Mm-hmm. But now all of a sudden this coronavirus thing comes and everybody gets the day off from school and they, they got to have a month off and and they're sleeping late. What happens with uh, Cassandra and Carter? Do you want to go first? No, go ahead. <laughs> um, well, I'm out of work right now. So I've kind of just been doing like, I don't really have anything set. So some days I'll record, like I had wanted to do that song, um, Highlands and Heartlands. (laughs) So I just like one day I decided to do that, to take up the time out of my day because there's not really anything else to do. Right. But. I've been out of school for a couple of years. I, I was just going to say, after I asked the question, I realized I probably should ask Carter because you're all, you're 19 and, and I was waiting for you to say, Joe, I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are done homeschooling me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cassandra, let me break the news to you because you are the daughter. You will be homeschooled for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Carter, because you're the brother, you have to make sure of that. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, now, how about yourself? You, you, uh, you're getting up in the morning. I know your dad's making you get up, which is a, it was just a positive thing. Um, are, do you have chores? Are you getting up and going to work or are you at home and you're hitting the studies you're hitting the books? Yeah. So I get up and, and I just got, you know, chores around the house to do, but then, uh, yeah, I just kind of get to school as fast as I can try to get that done. And then after it's just kind of, you know, work out or, you know, do music or, or something like that. So, yeah, I, 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 I could tell that there's some great work, work ethics uh, instilled into both of you. So now the two of you are making music together, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's the videographer? Who's the producer all of all of this stuff? I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So how does that work? You, 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 you hey, Cassandra, you want to go outside and make a video? I mean, yeah. what? actually, usually I want to do like, I had wanted to do the outside videos, but yeah, she usually kind of is like, Hey, let's go here. And then I kind of put it together in a sense. Um, but yeah, so being in the video and videoing is difficult. Um, <laughs> but, um, for for most of it i would set the camera down obviously on a tripod and and film but my mom actually uh helped us out with uh one of the videos she filmed all of it for us so um so yeah i just kind of put it all together on my computer and edit and everything but she helped us out with one of them and and then i used the tripod for some other stuff yeah you're doing a great job i'll tell you what i'm going to do um i have lots of questions for you we're not we're not running away you're not off the hook yet. The interview is not over. Okay. I've got a lot of good stuff to ask you guys, but I do want to play a song. I'm anxious to hear a song. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to jump over to the browser. We're going to play a song. The first song that I'm playing is, is uh, yes, I will. Okay. That was the one you, you sent to me last night. Correct. Is that the name of the song? Yes, I will. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Is that's not an original, right? It's a cover song. Who who actually yeah, said yeah. Elevation Worship did that song. Elevation Worship. And uh, out of curiosity, all of the music that that you do is it one hundred percent worship music, or do you kick back every now and then and say, "Hey, I want to sing a song from Adele," or I'm just yeah. grabbing an artist out of the sky? But uh, is it strictly worship music? I mean, um, we tend to do more Christian music. Um, because of just how we've been brought up and uh, that's just kind of what we've always gone with. But uh, every once in a while we'll, we'll pull out something uh, a little more secular, but, but uh, yeah, mostly, mostly uh, Christian music. Yeah. Stay with that. I, I, and I mean that I, I love, <clears throat> I love worship music and that's, you know, one of the main reasons why, I wanted to have you on the show because I'm, I'm mixing it up. I can have a rock artist and yesterday I have artists out of, out of Nashville, Tennessee doing country. And I love the fact that you guys are in that genre of worship music um, because not only, you know, and I know you, you both have and your entire family has very strong faith and I love that, but worship music musically, unless you're involved in it, you might not understand it, but some of the guitar work, like like there's a lot of and carter you'll you'll agree with me on this or uh, cassandra as well because you play guitar but there's a lot of like different delays Mm -hmm. uh, on the guitars there's a lot of i mean the arrangements in worship music um it's just amazing and then 
when two angels like yourself sing it, I'm telling you, God is up there with a big smile from ear to ear going, yep, those are my kids right there. I love it. (laughs) So let me, uh, let me go into this song. It's called Yes, I Will. And then I will uh, come back to you guys. Okay. All right. Sounds good. You got it. Let's move over here. Okay, so you're listening to Wake Up to the Vibe. I am here with Carter and Cassandra Scambato. Uh, they are uh, siblings in, from Broad Albany, New York, and they specialize in singing and praising through worship music, and it's just absolutely beautiful. So take a listen. They just made this video. It's called Yes, I Will by Elevation Worship, uh, brought to you by Cassandra and Carter Scambato, right here on Wake Up to the Vibe. And you're waking up to the vibe right here on 1490. I did that twice. Oh my gosh, that's the second time I did that. Uh, hold on one second. I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, I actually came back on and 
mentioned the call letters 1490, uh, which was a radio station I worked at 10 years ago. And I don't know why it keeps coming out of my mouth. It's got to (laughs) stop. (laughs) Oh, my God. But that was beautiful. It's Carter and Cassandra Scambato, uh, the the siblings who are praising through worship music. And uh, uh, you guys have such a cool vibe about you. It's like it's so even keel and level. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm like this, <laughs> and I get up in the morning. I'm like, wake up to the vibe. You know, hey, good morning, everybody. And you guys are so relaxing. Like I could hang out with you and <laughs> because it would relax me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, well, a normal day isn't. I mean, we get crazy. Yeah, we you do. Crazy, yeah. Do you guys yeah. ever, the two of you, do you ever like, you know, <laughs> duke it out at all? Uh, every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, Cassandra, tell me, give me one thing that you love the most about Carter. Mm-hmm. Um,. I'll give you two things. Okay, I'll I'll take two. I'll take two. (laughs) (laughs) So I love his voice. um, And also his, like he has a very genuine and caring spirit. Like he's very, like there for you and understanding. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Carter, you know the same question is coming your way, right? Mm-hmm. And it was, it was maybe a little unfair because you had time to think about it. Cassandra didn't yeah. have any time. <laughs> yeah. I'm mixing it up. Don't worry, Cassandra. I'll get him. I'll get him. <laughs> Carter, I mean, beautiful sister. You guys are talented. Uh, give give me two things. I was going to say one. All give right, me two yeah. things that you love the most about your sister. Yeah, I say for like one, like just her her kindness, not, not just being like, Oh, a nice person, but like, it's, it's really real. And it's there because like, she never really gets like mad or anything like that. So I think that's like a really good personality trait for somebody to have, especially, uh, her, I just see it all the time. Um, she never really gets too mad or anything. So I really, really appreciate that about her. So beautiful. Beautiful. um, yeah, you got one more. Yes. The <laughs> second thing, I'd say she's always kind of willing to to do stuff, you know, with me or or whatever it is. She's uh she's not just like doing her own thing and wants to just do that, but she'll she'll give up stuff um to to appeal to others and and just that's a, another aspect that I really Yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful trait. Sacrifice, right? When you sacrifice mm-hmm. yeah. uh your own interests to uh, benefit other people. That's, that's man, you guys, don't you just want to hug each other right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is wake up to the vibe, man. This is where you get yeah. this vibe thing going on, you know? No, that was, that's beautiful. I, I really, I, I could see it. I could see the brother and sister love. Um, I could see your love for the Lord. And, and I want to talk about that. Um, I know, I know you were raised with faith and, uh, I know, you know, you were, you were raised to be in church and to worship through music in church. Okay. And then you get to a, a certain age, right? Where, where you start thinking for yourself. Okay. So it's no, no longer mom and dad saying, Hey, you have to get out of bed. Hey, you have to go to church. No, I don't want you playing uh, that song, because I, I went through uh, when I was, you know, your age, my parents made me go to church and uh, we weren't into the worship music. I actually didn't even discover worship music until I started going to Crossroads Church in Amsterdam, where I met your mom and dad and um, and fell in love with it. I just think worship music is absolutely beautiful. But you get to a certain age where, OK, now you're thinking for yourself, right? Faith is extremely important to the two of you. I can see it in your music. You're not just singing this song. You're feeling it and you're praising God. Why is it so important to you? I'm going to, Carter, I'm gonna, uh, so you guys don't have to like fight over who goes first. <laughs> Carter, I'll throw that one at you first. Yeah. Um, I'd say just a uh, big shout out to my parents, like the way they've raised us. Um, 
it's always been uh, putting God first. And uh, they've really showed us not just, um, you know, go to church and, and, and be, you know, good or whatever. They've, they've showed us the reality, I guess, of, of um, what a true Christian life um, should be like. And so they've always kind of given us just um, a genuine faith and uh, not just, you know, set us in Sunday school and churches where you learn, but it's also been in the household mm -hmm. with just real life stuff. So um, I'd say just, it's always been very real and genuine um, the way that they've raised us and, and brought us up in it. That's a great answer. Well, very well said. You speak very well, by the way, for a guy your age. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you are both very intelligent uh, individuals, and that, that's just so refreshing. <laughs> Cassandra, you. Cassandra, why, why is faith so important? Um, I think, well, it's, I've always, like, we've been brought up with it our whole life. Um, and honestly, I can't see, like, myself not being saved, like with going to work and being like, um, in the world with like non-believers, um, it's hard to see and like how they have no hope mm -hmm. that is like a really big one for me. Yeah. And it gives us a reason to live and yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. You, you just said something. We actually touched on it yesterday. Um, I had a group on the show, a duo uh, called The Young Fables, and uh, Laurel, the singer, uh, she lost her 19-year-old sister in a car accident and eight months later lost her father. And it was only a family of four. So within eight months, mm -hmm. yeah, her 19-year-old sister, then her dad. So within eight months' time, it's Laurel and her mom, right? Mm -hmm. And when I asked her, you know, how, how do you get through this? And, and she said, I couldn't do this without God. I couldn't do this without faith. I wouldn't be on this show talking about this. And she's just a beautiful person with a beautiful personality and everything. And, and, you know, I think it's really, really a blessing to have the two of you on my show. You're young. Um, I love when I meet young people who have such a strong faith in God. All the other stuff, you can go get your MBA, go get a job working for Microsoft and make $300,000 a year. You know what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh -huh. but what, what you have is so much more valuable in your core. So um, kudos to the two of you. I can say kudos to your parents for, for getting you there. But you're... But, you're on your own now, not and not in a sense of you know with your with your own homes and stuff, but you're on your own. You're you're at an age where now you take charge of your own life, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're choosing to do it with faith, and and that's man, it just gives me chills. Love it, I love because I love it. Yeah. So, do you guys ever think about getting into music as a profession? I mean, has that ever crossed your mind? Like like Chris Tomlin is it Chris Tomlin, right? Chris, Chris Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm a third day fan. I love third day, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you ever think of doing this for, for a living and, and going on tour and doing worship festivals? I mean, um, me personally, I, I've definitely thought about it, especially uh, a lot last year. Um, I was, um, really looking into doing music full time. Um, but I kind of, I, I felt a little bit of a different calling. You know, um, God made it kind of clear to me um, in my own life um, that he wanted me to go into mission work, mm -hmm. be a Christian missionary overseas um, to the unreached people. So uh, that's kind of where I've been called. But uh, I've always kept my mind open still to other opportunities, uh, especially music. Always been big into that. So, so I definitely, you know, look into doing music too on uh, any chances I get or opportunity. You know, I definitely take. So yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah, Cassandra, what do you do now? You you mentioned that you're you go to work in the morning and and uh, get your day underway. What what is that? What does that call I'm you? I'm actually to do? a hairstylist. Okay, all right. And I work in Saratoga. Okay, and I prob you probably have a lot of opportunities to get to talk to people and and 
Yeah. Right. And, and to yeah. talk about faith and, and, and how beautiful it is. Right. Mm-hmm. What about music? I mean, do you, do you ever feel the need to record? You know, I know you're recording with your brother, uh, but do you ever f- feel that urge to go out and actually really produce something that people can download and purchase and, and enjoy? Um, well, I've never thought like of that something being that I want to do, but I think like if there was the opportunity, I would really enjoy doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. If I can just chime in real quick. I think like being on the show too, it was also like a big eye opener for the both of us into looking more into, into music and really, um, you know, taking a bigger step into it and uh, putting more thought, I guess, into if we really want to pursue this or, um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I will, I will say this. Okay. Um, I know God has a plan for the two of you and you know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I know your faith is deep enough to know that your plan doesn't matter because it's not about your plan, right? There's a bigger plan that has control over your life. And, and I think if you hang on to that, um, you're going to find more peace in your heart. But if you do decide to take your voice and record it and put out some type of a release, I want to be the first one to get a copy. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> and, and maybe you could just go record 20 songs for Joe Altieri and send it off to okay. Raleigh, That's North great. Carolina. Like, you know, get mom and dad, do the family band thing. Do this for me because I love your voices. I'm going to play this next song. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. And the, this next song is what really brought you to the show. You know, I'm, I'm friends with your mom and dad. I happened to click on it uh, one day and I was like, what? <laughs> Like, what is this? I literally said to my girlfriend, I'm like, Michelle, listen to this. It's amazing. Oh, it's you. amazing. And um, so I'm going to play this song. All right. This is uh, I Will Praise You on the Mountains. Is that the, the actual name of the song? I know that was the chorus. Uh, line. I think it's Highlands in the Heartache. Yeah. I knew I would get that completely <laughs> wrong <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> because I keep singing that line in the song mm-hmm. and, and yeah, I, yeah. I took a guess that that's what the name of it was. <laughs> um, who, who actually sings this song? I mean, who wrote this song? Um, I know Hillsong sings it. I'm not sure if they wrote it, but Hillsong United. Yeah. 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 One of the best, right? One of the best groups in in worship music. For those of you who just tuned into the show, welcome and good morning. You're waking up to the vibe and we are so happy to have you here. I'm with Carter and Cassandra Scambato, siblings who are talking to us about worship music, the love for God and the love for family. And it's just, just the man, if if you leave this show and you have a bad day, something went wrong because, (laughs) because this is all good. We need to start every day like this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and play that song, uh, Hang Tight, and uh, give me the name of the song one more time so I don't screw it up. It's Highlands and the Heartache. Highlands and the Heartache. Yes, yep. Got it. Okay, hold one second. Highlands and the Heartache brought to you by Cassandra and Carter Scambato. Wait till you hear these voices, folks. Wait until you hear this. I was 
Waking up to the vibe. Wow, absolutely beautiful right there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's all I can say. 
Let's get back here and bring them back in this room. Guys, let me tell you, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> amazing. I, I'm telling you, I've said this all week. I said, folks, wait till Thursday. I'm telling you, these are voices from heaven. I have <laughs> angels on the show. I'm telling you. It, oh, my gosh. It's just so beautiful I, I don't I'm, I'm kind of speechless right now because you know what you two have you have soul you have heart mm -hmm. and you're young so for young people your age to display that through a worship song a lot of people can sing songs. A lot of people have beautiful voices, but I, it goes way, way beyond that and much deeper with the two of you. That's what I see. That's what I feel. So I had to, had to share that with you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, just absolutely beautiful. And that's how brothers and sisters should roll right there. That's how you, right. that's how you yeah. get along. You keep doing that together. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You know, I always, I always, uh, kind of, you know, Carter, you had mentioned that you have a calling to go overseas and, and work in some type of, a uh, uh, missionary, uh, aspect uh monday on the show i don't know if you know this but i had a uh, dr tom katina mm -hmm. on the show yeah. did you happen to watch it at all uh, i did not watch the whole thing okay so mm -hmm. he had a calling right he went on a missionary mm -hmm. to the to uh, the nuba mountains in sudan he's still there 15 years later one doctor yeah. one million people if you'd like, I can hook you up with him. I'm sure he could use some help. Yeah, <laughs> How far yeah, do you want to go? Cool. That would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. And I love that you have that interest to do that. So if you listen, if, if somebody was watching the show and they said, man, I want to give these to a million dollars to go help the world. Look, Cassandra's, <laughs> you, you, you lit right up like a light bulb. <laughs> so I'll start with you, Cassandra. If someone was to say, I'm going to give you a million dollars to go fix the world in some way, some capacity, what would you choose to do? Um, oh boy. <laughs> Tough one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, is there a is there a, a area where you volunteer or uh, uh, an area where you're very passionate about in helping people? Um, well, I volunteer at my church. Okay. Um, but man. Yeah, I put you. On, I put you on the spot. I'm sure you could spend a million dollars helping people. I'm positive. Carter, does anything come to mind just off, off the top of your head? Um, I, I think uh, just kind of, I think I would, I would put a lot towards uh, orphanages um, in, in the U.S. and outside because I kind of have always had just a little click in the back of my head. Um, I've never wanted to be alone, um, right. and I'm very fortunate, you know, to grow up in a great household and everything, so like, uh, it's something that I, I don't really want to think of all like kids suffering and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I do it, it kind of is like uh, a really important thing. And so I think I would, I would put a lot of money towards that. Um, because just, yeah, I, it, you know, it, I don't know. It's, it just bugs me to think of, you know, somebody without parents or a nice home or whatever. Yeah. Well, so I have good news for you and bad news. The good news is I have a feeling someday you're going to be helping those kids in the, in the orphanage. The bad news is I don't have a million dollars to give you. <laughs> uh, man, I was hoping. <laughs> if I could write that check, brother, I'd, I'd send it to you today. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. You, you guys, you guys are great. Um, I think you're off to uh, an amazing life. I think your foundation and your core is as solid as it can get. And I truly do believe that because I know it was built on faith. And, and, mm. and I think if your core and your foundation is built on faith, it's all good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sir. So before we close, 
And I do want to thank you very, very much for for blessing our viewing audience with your your beautiful voices and the guitar playing is just beautiful. Uh, but thank before you, we go, I want to close the show with this. I almost feel like, okay, so parents, okay, Scott and Jessica Scambato, I actually feel like I'm sitting talking to a young version <laughs> because you look a lot like your parents and it's kind of cool. So, so Carter, I'm going to start with you. Okay. One sentence. Describe your dad. My dad. All right. One sentence. <clears throat> I. I would say a caring, understanding, um, structured man that I can look up to and respect and follow his example, um, who has taught me, um, you know, right from wrong and <clears throat> how to, how to live an honoring life, um, not only to people, but to God and, um, and yeah, I think that that is kind of what I would put that. That's a good answer. Cassandra, I told you I would pick on him first before the show was over. I know Cassandra's like, when am I going to have time to think about the question? Because <laughs> you're the older one. So <laughs> I want you to uh, describe your mom for me. She, well, some of the main things that stick about stick out to me about her um, she's very sacrificial, like she will give up anything to come help us or like teach us every, anything. Um, she homeschooled all of us. <laughs> uh, she's very caring. Um, she does anything <laughs> for her family. Um, she's very, I can't think of the word persistent and helpful um i had one word but i can't think of that's it. that's all right she's all heart you know the reason i i put the two of you on the spot right there is because i know they're watching and and i know these videos will never go away unless they shut down facebook and youtube and i don't see that happening so i asked that question as the closing of the show because I want your parents to look back at this video 20 years from now, okay? Um, you guys are beautiful. You're awesome. Your parents have done well. God has done well in your family. And uh, and I, I, I can only hope the best for the both of you. Well, thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come on here. You'll be back. Yeah. You'll be back. And I want 20 songs <laughs> recorded, sent to me personally, okay? Get on, okay. <laughs> Get on it. Listen, start with five. Just give me five and then add no, five right. later. <laughs> Don't wait until you have 20 done, okay? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Don't run away. Stick around. We'll close out the show together because it's that time. And you are waking Great. up to the vibe, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me with my guests here, Carter and Cassandra Scambato beautiful music beautiful souls gosh that's good stuff and tomorrow don't forget rebecca Paconi will be here with me quarantine with the vibe tribe we will see you next week right here on wake up to the vibe nice and early 7 a.m peace love happiness pay it forward and let your light shine bye bye now all right